Hello, and welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert, and in this screencast, we're going to make a Meteor Dodge game where we have this tiny little spaceship that is really agile, but doesn't move too fast, and we have to avoid all those meteors that come down for as long as possible so we can get this time score as high as we can. So let's see how this game is put together. Click on the Create button to start up the Scratch editor. The first thing we're going to do is get rid of this cat sprite because we don't need it, so right click on the sprite and select delete. And instead we're going to add a new sprite from the library, so click on choose sprite from library. It's underneath the transportation section. So we're going to have to make a few changes to this sprite first. Go ahead and delete that second costume, we won't be needing it. And also... Select the entire spaceship with the Select tool, and go ahead and grab this top anchor point and rotate it over so that it's facing to the right. And the reason we do that is all sprites start off facing to the right, and we want the direction that the sprite is facing to be where the nose of the spaceship is pointed. And then we're going to make this a little bit fancier. Go ahead and right click on this first costume and duplicate it, and then duplicate it again. And we're going to make our spaceship a little bit fancier by adding these power rings that are shooting out from the back. So click on the ellipse tool and maybe get that nice light blue color and make the line a bit thicker than normal. And so we'll just draw a little ring here. And then for the second image, we'll draw a slightly bigger ring that's further away. And then an even bigger ring for the third frame of animation. So this will look like the rings are shooting out from the rocket. This rocket is way too big, so I'm going to click on the shrink tool and shrink it down to about this big. And while we're making changes, let's click on the stage and change the background to one of the backgrounds that Scratch provides, click on the Choose Backdrop from Library button, and the backdrop that we want to use is called Stars. Great, let's go back to the Spaceship Sprite and add the code for this sprite. At the very start of the program, when the user clicks on the green flag, we'll want to move the spaceship to the very center of the stage, so in the blue motion category, Grab that X and Y, and set both the X and Y values to 0. And since we'll hide the spaceship at the end of the last game, we'll want to make this spaceship show up at the very start of the game. So grab a show block and snap it into place right under there. Now we'll enter a forever loop, so go to the control section and grab a forever block. And all this code is going to do is have the spaceship follow around the mouse cursor. So in the blue motion category, we want the spaceship to point towards the mouse cursor and then move a few steps towards it. And 10 is too fast, so we're going to make this slow down a bit, down to 5 steps. And then to play the frames of animation, we'll go to the purple look section and grab that next costume block. So we can test this out. That yeah, looks pretty good. Also, we'll want to add a little timer in the top left. So first we'll create a variable in the orange data section. Click on make a variable. The variable's name will be time. And so at the very start of the program, we're going to have time start off at zero. So when the green flag is first clicked, we're going to set time to zero. And then we'll enter into a forever loop here, and we want the value in time to be the number of seconds that have passed since the very start of the game. So we'll add this wait one seconds block, and we'll change this down to a tenth of a second, 0 0.1. And then the orange data section will change the time value by 0 0.1. So when we run this, we can see that the time variable is sort of like a stopwatch, where it's counting up how long it's been since the very start of the game. Next, let's draw some meteors. So click on the Paint New Sprite button, 
And drawing these meteors is going to be pretty simple. We'll select a bright yellow color first. And with the paintbrush tool, draw a little, a little teardrop shape facing to the right. We can fill that in with the paint bucket fill tool. And once we have that yellow teardrop, go ahead and right click on it and duplicate it to make four identical costumes. This way it'll have the same yellow core, but we'll have different red flames around each costume. So with the paintbrush tool, just draw an outline of where the flames will be around the yellow core part. And we can make it flicker out towards the back. It doesn't have to look perfect, but the random irregular look to all these costumes will make it look like the flames are flickering behind it. And maybe we'll just draw some sparks coming from out the back. We can see what this animation looks like if we just temporarily grab one of these forever loops and put a next costume inside of it and then double click it to run this loop. That looks pretty good. So let's rename this sprite to Meteor1. And we'll add all the code for this sprite and then make several duplicates of it afterwards. So the code for the Meteor is pretty simple. Let's start off with when the green flag is clicked and have a forever loop. And what the Meteors will do is first hide themselves, and then wait a random amount of time. That's just so that they all come down at different intervals. And then they will move themselves up to the very top, and then some, and place themselves randomly somewhere at the top, and also point down at a random direction. And once they're in position, they'll show themselves and start moving down, meanwhile seeing if they're touching the player and broadcasting a game over message if they ever do. And then once they hit the bottom, they'll just hide themselves again and then start the entire process all over again. So let's go through that step by step. First, in the purple looks category, grab the hide block. Next, we want to have it wait a random amount of seconds. So in the orange control section, grab that wait one seconds block. And since we want it to be a random number of seconds, we'll grab this pick random one to 10. Uh, we don't want it to be that long though, just one to five seconds. There's actually kind of a problem with this. Pick random 1 to 5 will only return the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So it'll always be right at that 1 second interval that all of these meteors will be coming down. That's not really that great. It would be nice if we could have it just wait maybe 2.6 seconds or 4.2 seconds. And there's a way we can do that with some clever math. Pull this out for a little bit and let's change this to 10 to 50. And then grab this division operator block and put that in the front and then have that divided by 10. Now this pick random 10 to 50 will have a value like 26 which gets divided by 10 so then that'll be 2.6 seconds. That'll give us much more random downward pourings of these meteors. So now we have to set it somewhere randomly uh, for its x value, go to the blue motion category, and we'll just set x to some random number. Go to the operator section and grab that pick random, 
and it can be anywhere from negative 240, which is on the far left side, to 240, which is on the far right side. And then we always want it to be at the top, so let's set the Y value to just positive 180. That'll be at the very top. And then we also want it to point downward, so point in direction. And actually, we don't always want it to point directly down, which would be 180 degrees. We want it to vary to the left and right a little bit. So let's grab this operator section, grab this plus sign. So we want it to be 180 degrees plus or minus, say, 25 degrees. So we can grab that pick random block and say, pick a random number between negative 25 and 25. So that'll add a little variance in where it's pointed. It'll still generally be pointed downwards, but it just won't always be straight down and snap that into place. Now that the meteor is in position, we can go ahead and show it. And now we'll want it to enter into a loop and keep moving downwards. So go to the control section and grab this repeat until block. Now we want this meteor to keep moving down and also keep checking if it's hit the player until its Y value reaches something less than negative 160, say. So in the operator section, grab that less than operator and in the motion category, we'll get the Y position of the meteor. And if the Y position of the meteor is less than negative 160, then we'll stop looping in this loop and continue on. Actually, after that point, we'll just have it loop back to the top of the forever block and then hide itself and wait a random amount of time and then start falling down all over again. But meanwhile, while it's in this loop, we want it to move downwards, so grab this move 10 steps block. We also want it to animate by changing the costumes through those different frames of animation that we have. So click on the purple looks category and grab this next costume block. And then we also want it to check if it's touching the spaceship. So go to the control section and grab this if block. We want to see if it's touching the spaceship. So the light blue sensing category has these touching blocks, and we can just set that to spaceship by clicking on the black triangle. And in that case, we'll have it broadcast a game over event, and we'll reprogram the spaceship to handle that uh, broadcast. So this will be a new broadcast message. So click on new message, and then type its name, game over. So let's add the code to the spaceship sprite to handle when it receives the game over broadcast. So we'll grab this when I receive game over block from the events category. And in this event, we want the spaceship to hide itself because we'll have a different sprite of an explosion animate itself instead. And we also want to stop this other script that counts up the timer. So go to the orange control section and grab that stop block we don't want it to stop the entire program, we just want it to stop all the other scripts in this sprite, particularly this script right here, which has the timer go up. So as soon as it gets hit by a meteor, the game over message is broadcasted, and then it will stop this, uh, stop this other script up here. So let's test this out. And the time's still going up. And then, perfect. So let's make a cool explosion sprite that can play once the spaceship gets hit by a meteor. Now we could draw this ourselves, but it's kind of tricky. Instead, we could just download an image of an explosion animation off of the internet. So I'm going to go to inventwithscratch.com in my web browser. And here in the download section, you'll find a whole series of these explosion images. So right click on each one of these and save link as to download them to your computer. Okay, that's explosions one through eight. And back at the scratch editor, you can create a new sprite by uploading an image from your computer into the editor. So I'll start off with explosion one, and then for that sprite, I'll go to the costumes tab and upload different costumes from each of these explosions. So 
So I have eight different costumes for this explosion. The script section for the explosion sprite is pretty simple. All it does is at the very start of the program is it hides itself since it doesn't need to be seen until the ship gets hit by a meteor. And then it will just wait until it receives that game over sprite. So grab the when I receive block from the brown events category. And let's make sure it starts off with the very first costume. So in the purple looks category, grab that switch costume block and switch it to explosion one. Then we also want the explosion sprite to be wherever the player's spaceship was. So in the blue motion category, grab this go to block and click on the black triangle to set it to go to spaceship. And now once it's in, in the right position with the correct costume, go ahead and show it. So in the looks category, grab this show block. Now all we have to do is have it run through all the different costumes. Now we could have eight of these next costume blocks all in a row, but instead let's go to the orange control section and grab this repeat loop block. We'll just set it to repeat all the code inside of it eight times. And now we can just grab one next costume block and have that executed eight times. But just so that we don't have it play as quickly as possible, let's add a slight delay from the orange control section, grab the wait one seconds block. One second is way too long. We just want it to be a very, very short delay, something like 0.03 seconds. And then after the explosion animation is played, we'll want this sprite to hide itself. And even though at this point the spaceship is blown up, let's give the player a chance to just consider the dark, vast emptiness of space. Two seconds should be good enough for that. So let's go to the orange control section, grab this block, and say wait two seconds. And then after that, we'll terminate the entire program with this stop all block. Okay, let's try this out. Click on the green flag to start testing it. Nice. And it waited for two seconds and then it automatically stopped. So one meteor isn't that tricky to avoid, but let's start duplicating this sprite over and over and over again. The more meteors we have, the harder it will be to dodge them all. So I'll maybe go for 10 meteors. Whoa, they're coming down pretty hard. So that's it for this program. Oof, that was impossible to dodge. Anyway, that's it for this screencast. In this screencast, we learned how to make our own little animations for a spaceship and also for this meteor, but also how to download different animation images from the internet and then upload them to the Scratch editor so that we can play through really complex looking animations that other people have made. So I hope you found this project to be helpful. Thanks for watching.